January 1st of 2021, that's when I officially started my screen printing business. And that was about 570 days ago, give or take, I looked it up. And that's also about a year and a half ago. So in the past year and a half, I think a lot has happened. So yeah, let's talk about that. I'm gonna to cut to the chase because I know what you're thinking. If I started a business a year and a half ago, is it profitable yet? And uh, no, not even close. I've probably deviated from the original plan quite a bit. I promise it's not all been bad. I just think it's important to talk about some of the mistakes that I've made along the way. I think that this is particularly hard for me to talk about right now because I'm still working and figuring out a lot of the solutions to the problems. Like I don't have all the answers at the moment. So it's like, there's no happy ending to the story. All right, so I'll give some examples of exactly what, what I'm talking about. So I would say like my struggle number one would be a general lack of interest from customers. Um, and that's on like the screen printing side. And that's kind of a big problem to have. But I will say that I am not a salesman. Like if there's one skill that I don't have or that I absolutely hate in this whole process, it is sales. I, I struggle with that the most. I hate sales. I'm not a salesperson. I don't know how to do it. And I'm just really bad at it. But there's still a lot that I can do regardless of that. And I'm still working through some of that. And I, ha I haven't made it to the bottom of the list. So there's a lot of options available to me right now. And some of those are um, have a lot to do with like SEO and online, like just making sure my website has the right marketing copies and testing out what works and what doesn't work. And that's been, I think a little helpful. Ultimately I launched and I marketed, I spread the word to everyone I know and months went on and little to pretty much no interest. I have been getting some traffic to the website, which is good, but I receive a request for a quote, uh, maybe once a month at best which is not good. So the traffic to the site is there, but the conversion rate to ultimately do what I want them to do on my site is just terrible. And on top of that, once I do send out a quote to someone, I think another problem I'm having is that I'm getting almost zero responses from them. So I'll send them a quote and I pretty much don't hear anything from them. I'll check back in, nothing really happens. I don't know, I'm still figuring out why. I don't know exactly what's going on there. I think um, part of it might just be because since my numbers are so low, the conversion rate for something like that is going to be low regardless. So I like if I if I'm only getting one quote or one request for an estimate a month, it just kind of makes sense that I still wouldn't get um, any orders from that. Maybe the numbers work out like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm guessing that's part of the problem. I know that I'm pricing my estimates. I would say low, if anything, um, maybe too low. Maybe I need to look into increasing the estimates a little bit because maybe people are getting the perception that if the price is so low, maybe the quality is not there. Again, I think this just goes back to um, I'm terrible at sales and I don't know how to like convert a lead into a sale. So that's something that I want to learn and I am in the process of doing that, but it just takes time. All right. So struggle number two, this one's a little more obvious, but I received a lot of negative feedback on the name, no clients allowed. I used to be called no clients allowed. Um, and then I changed it to NCA. I just used the abbreviation. To be honest, I really didn't think that the name would have that much of an impact. I actually remember the exact moment when I knew I needed to change the name and it was when I was on the phone with my financial advisor. Uh, we were talking about taxes or something and I was telling her uh, that I have a screen printing business and I make custom t-shirts and she uh, became really interested and she said that she has a lot of clients who are in need of custom t-shirts and that she was gonna recommend me to basically her whole client list. And I thought this was incredible. 
Um, so we started talking about this for a long time, probably about like a half an hour, 45 minutes. And up until this point, I, I'd never told her what the name of the company was. I never said no clients allowed at any point. And towards the end, she asked me what my website was so that she could send it to her clients. And I, the, the website at the time was noclientsallowed.com, which now um, redirects to my new URL. The moment I said that name out loud, I could hear the tone of the conversation change completely. And she she was kind of taken aback by it. And um, turns out she did not recommend me to any of her clients. So at that point, I was like, um, people are not thinking about this the way I'm thinking about it. And there's a problem here. So I need to change, I need to change the name. Um, and she, I think she was a good example because she, again, was a financial advisor. She, she was, she's not constantly involved with other creators. Instead, she's on the other side of the spectrum where she's very analytical and she deals with CPAs and accountants and stuff like that. Basically, I just thought that her judgment of the whole thing was a good reference point. That was a hard lesson to learn, but I kept my mind open to it and I ended up um, trying to be as objective as possible. I mean, it took me months to come up with the initial brand and all that got scrapped pretty quickly. And so I had to go through that whole process again. And it took me another probably three months to just redo and re overhaul everything, the whole website. So that brings me to, I'm gonna go through a couple of lessons that I've learned. And so lesson number one is you have to keep an open mind. Um, always be learning and try to see what works and what doesn't work and gather, just basically gather data and and change things up based on, on what you're learning. Okay, lesson number two, or maybe three, I don't, I lost count, but don't stop having fun with it. Unfortunately, I'm in a point where I'm not getting regular orders like I want to. I can go weeks without ever screen printing anything, and that's, that's not good. So one reason why I screen print is because I think it's really fun. I love screen printing. I love creating uh, new designs and seeing them come to fruition. Just because I don't have customer orders and I, that I'm not making money on a regular basis, I can still continue to print for fun. And that's what I've been doing the past several months. I've just been creating a lot of t-shirts that I wanted to create for the sake of making them. And that's it. Um, I'm also trying a lot of new printing techniques and I'm trying some new equipment. Um, and that can go a long ways because if I do end up getting orders that match uh, the needs for some of that equipment or new printing techniques, I know how to do them and I, I took the time to practice it. But that's really just secondary because again, I'm just trying to have fun with it. I guess another way of saying that is just don't think about the money too much um, because that can be a trap for sure. And I also wanna add, because I think this is important to understand that this, I'm doing this part-time because I have a full-time job and this is something I do on my evenings and weekends. Having a full-time job can be draining, obviously, and then, you know, whenever you have the spare energy or the spare time, um, screen printing is a lot of work. You just have to have a lot of like time management skills in order to pursue a passion like this. There are limiting factors there that are just kind of outside of my control to varying degree degrees. Okay, so what are your questions? What do you guys wanna know? Feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try to respond in some way, but um, I just wanna be a helpful resource to anyone who's curious or struggling or in the same boat. Maybe you're trying to start something for yourself. I don't know, but feel free to ask me. And also follow me on TikTok and Twitter because I post updates over there regularly. And I think that's about it. Okay, see ya.